for biomimicry, and I'll kind of just run you through the preliminary ideas and then get to our conclusions. Some of the, we lost half our group members, they left and deserted, so it was sad times. Ah. I was all by myself and Joe came and rescued me. So but anyway, so some of the original ideas we had were, we obviously were biomimicry, we were kind of looking at more of a broad idea, like an ecology based, you know, what if solar bee was like a successional species, like I think John was talking about stage one, stage two kind of thing. And we kind of like that kind of, did kind of it came back later. We were looking at um, adaptability to biochromatic regions, which we started building up later. Minnesota has tall grass, short grass, hardwood, pine. We have, it's, Minnesota as a state, we're kind of like this intermingling of all these various um, bioregions throughout the United States. They all kind of intersect right in Minnesota. So we have this abundant diversity to draw models from. Um, we kind of looked at... You haven't been south, huh? What did you say? You haven't been south? I've been south of the <laughs> But anyway, um, we looked at the goose as kind of a migratory model. Like, it lives in Minnesota. It works between all these different bioregions. Maybe our solar decathlon is built for Minnesota, but it's built in a way where either it adapts to different regions or it as a farm has the ability to, wherever it is, it still functions because a goose doesn't really change form and like molt or something. Um, look to Minnesota for natural inspiration and cues. This is kind of where we had this idea and then it kind of jump started from there. Where we started looking into, with we had a mechanical engineer here looking into biomimetic climate control how living things adapt to the different seasons that they're not specifically Minnesota, but the fact that we have them and a lot of other teams don't, especially, you know, Minnesota's Minnesota. People around the country kind of are like, oh, so so, and it's cold, and we all have nice <laughs> so, kind of building off of this impression that the rest of the country has of us. We had ideas like hibernation. What does the building do in winter if it's January versus if it's summer? We have hot and humid in summer, we have freezing and very dry in winter and everything in between, different shifts. We were looking at seasons, dailies, and then this was the inspiration, this um, mercurial climate that we're in. Sunflower we mentioned, uh, I'll just kind of skip right along. We had the idea of a living house, which the first group mentioned, what can this house give back? Is this house just another solar decathlon project? So we can go, yay, we came in 14th or something. Or first, preferably, or where does it go from there? Building as an organism, self-regulation, all these information systems kind of act as nerves and an education system. We have the idea that maybe leave the TV light and the red light pops up, or click off the TV, go to bed. Tells you when you can use or when you should use electricity. Some of the systems, they're intelligent systems. So if it's three o'clock, and say run the dishwasher because we've got plenty of power, everybody. And um, skipping right along into this, this is the summation of our ideas, which were kind of scattered, but number one, seasonal adaptation, very strong part. It can bring a lot of richness to our project because what is our building in winter? Put on a winter coat, that's what animals do. So we're looking at that in summer, maybe it sheds, it can breathe. In between, it has different various aspects. Looking at Minnesota, uh, Joe had the idea, you know, we have the, mid, the river that comes through. Everything that we do in a state goes downriver and affects all the way through the country down to New Orleans and the dead zone out of the Gulf. So maybe our change here starts to grow, which I'll touch on in a minute. We have all these different bioregions to, I, to pull inspiration from, not necessarily resources, not like, let's take hope. But something like short grass prairie is very good at regulating water usage because it doesn't rain as much in short grass prairie so it's what it does with the water it's very specific and it's very important versus wetlands which could be our inspiration for water treatment something like that and then these other ones we haven't we didn't really studied kind of just pull them up as ideas maybe something comes from each one of these maybe nutrient cycling or ecotone ideas something like that so that kind of goes into place-based adaptation each one of these ecosystems is unique, has unique properties, but they all share the same properties of recycling and production. And then studying all these different systems, like I said, to get biomimetic cues. Also, one thing that we wanted to touch on that's really, it was 
it kind of came as an afterthought, but I think it's really strong, especially for Minneapolis, St. Paul, not only Minnesota, is the idea of cultures. If you look even within just Minneapolis, St. Paul, it's kind of a microcosm. We have the Scandinavian immigrants, Germans, Irish, we also have Somali, Hmong. We have this gigantic cultural melting pot. And we didn't really know where to go with that because it's not necessarily biomimetic, but I think it's important that we address it because this isn't just like Caucasian educated person built. It should kind of reach out to all the different cultures and try to represent everything that is the state of Minnesota, not just ice fishing people. And then our migration idea again, it goes from Minneapolis to Washington, D.C. It's kind of just at an idea level, but what effect does the migration of this building out of its home climate into another climate, how does that affect it? And idea number five is kind of, we went back to the idea of the building as a successional species, but Joe thought rewording it, maybe it's a pioneer species, it's not successional, instead of a bull thistle, maybe it's, it, we have the volcano exploding and there's lava and a flower going out of it. So maybe our building is this flower that's growing into this urban hardscape. Maybe it's the first step in taking suburbia with 94 running through it and starting to, our first, building is the plant and it produces the seed which then starts to green the infrastructure or maybe Minnesota as a state since we're one of the states leading the nation in environmental policy with 2020 things like that maybe Minnesota starts to grow to the rest of the nation our ideas start to cross borders to the rest of the United States sharing inspiration something like that so those are our ideas which are kind of broad based but we kind of went into more specific ideas with the next round after our big political poster.